So, it's a pretty old tradition on this channel that after every season, as more and more miraculous powers are revealed and shown off over the course of the season, that we refresh our rankings for each of the powers and come up with a brand new list with the information that we have thus far. So, welcome back to All Miraculous is Ranked, Season 5 Edition. Okay, so for this edition, we gotta set out some ground rules for what's good and what's not. Alrighty, so we're not looking at the actual characters here, not the actual heroes, just their potential power set. Each hero is alone, they're battling some sort of villain, so either an akumatized person, a senti monster, or a miraculous villain, with no outside help or allies. And on top of that, they have access to their full adult powers, as in, they can spam their abilities with no need to reset the miraculouses, and retransform. Okay, so seems fair. Rules established, if so, let's go. So, we'll begin with our low tier. At this stage, I do think that all the Miraculouses are pretty good, and they have pretty decent basic power sets. But you know, some are just better than others. And I mean, I think the worst for this set of rules is the Eagle. The weapon, a bull roarer, sure, nothing special. And the power, Liberation, is shooting out a feather that frees people of personality traits that prevent them from reaching their full potential. Pretty interesting power. So immediately, if you're up against a Miraculous villain or a Senti monster, good game. Seer. Gonna be much harder to do anything of value. Imagine using your power on a villain and it just ends up helping them reach their full potential to beat your ass. That'd be pretty embarrassing. And on top of that, I don't actually think it would do anything to a senti monster. And if it does, it would just do the same thing it does to the other types of villains. I mean, maybe, maybe it can turn back an akumatized villain, you know, inspire them to reject the akuma, but we've never actually seen it do that. We only saw it work on those randoms from the finale who were being possessed by the rings. So, hmm. If we're being generous, it's a one-hit KO to an akumatized villain. But I guarantee it does nothing against anybody else, which means you're going to have to rely on your weapon alone, which is not ideal. Especially since literally everybody else you could fight is going to have some sort of power to fight you. But that's just the generous version of this, because there's also the potential of the magic of the butterfly miraculous, the akumatization power, not actually allowing the eagle to override it like this. And if that's the case, then this is legit just useless. And in some instances, it simply makes your enemy actively stronger. So I think in the end, it's pretty clear that in many instances, this power is going to go a long way to making your enemy actively stronger. And so on the balance of everything, it comes in last place. Bad luck, Eagle. Bad luck. Next up, I reckon it's the dog. And you might be thinking, Oh, smarty pants, the dog's really good. Didn't you see what Felix did in Strike Back? It's actually super powerful. This is cringe that you put it here. And I would say to you, eh. I think it was very powerful in that very specific set of circumstances that is very difficult to repeat. And on top of that, Felix hacks the servers, I swear. The dude has plot armor for days. Unstoppable plot armor. Remember that time that in his base form, he was able to contend with multiple akumatized villains and avoid them without any powers at all? Or when he broke into Gabe's safe with his Spy Kids gadget somehow? A young teen able to crack Gabe's multi-million dollar security system like it was nothing. Stuff like that. The kid just gets shit done no matter what the plot wants. And he just has the power of the storyline keeping him safe in a lot of ways. But yeah, the dog. For starters, the weapon's kind of bad. It's just a ball. And yeah, a ball that summons what it hits, but that's it. When you watch the show, just look at how often the heroes need to deflect things with their weapon. Basically, every villain you're going to come up against, at least Sentis and the Akumatized ones, usually shoot stuff at you. Good luck blocking that with your little ball. Yeah, being able to summon an item with the ball is useful to get the Akumatized object or the Senti controller or whatever. But it does require top tier accuracy and a bit of luck. And on top of that, the power doesn't even seem to be that fast. You can't spam it like you can with a bunch of the other powers because you actually only have the one ball and then you have to wait and you have to pick up the ball and you have to do the power and all of that. You can't just rapid fire this thing. You can't throw a bunch of balls and then summon everything back to you. So, yeah, I don't see how it goes any higher than this. The power is honestly one that feels like they designed it with the big Felix moment in mind, and then they worked backwards and created it. And so, the power set's very niche. I mean, it's god tier in certain situations, but as a support player, not the main event hero. So, bad luck dog. Maybe the goat up next. The brush weapon, pretty shit. <laughs> And Genesis is a power that sounds good in theory. Sounds good. But it's also kind of bad. Look, you can create any object you desire, apparently. But it has to be mundane. So there's no magic. 
So I guess you could make a bomb or a gun, but I feel like that shit ain't even gonna work on the characters you'd be fighting against. And it's not like you can try to pull a Gabe and drop a nuke or a meteor, because remember, your character is supposed to be a hero. You can't just threaten people like that and say, oh, you'd better give up or I'm gonna drop a nuke on Paris that I just made, <laughs> Oppenheimer. I mean, honestly, the GOAT <laughs> seems like a great power if you're a villain or a terrorist, but as a hero fighting against other characters with actual powers, there's just so many better ones. Next up, and it is honestly already getting a bit tougher now, because once you remove that time limit and allow everybody the chance to just use their powers without any limits at all, everybody becomes so much stronger. All the powers become so much more useful. <sighs> I think maybe the monkey goes next. Okay, so the monkey has a big stick. Nice. Always a useful tool for beating the shit out of somebody. I can respect the big stick, but a lot of the Miraculouses give you a good weapon. I need a little bit more from this one. The power. The power itself, it is good. It's basically switching off someone else's power, but beyond that, what's it got for me? Nothing. Doesn't turn off the super strength, the super speed, the endurance, the near invulnerability that basically everyone has when they're super powered in this show. And so now, the victor is going to rely on you walloping somebody with a stick over and over again to see if you can wear them down. And look, I enjoy walloping people with sticks as much as the next guy, but I wouldn't trust that I'm going to be like Gandalf from Lord of the Rings, hitting orcs so hard with my big stick that they just seem to straight up die from the force of it. Especially since these people are going to be powered up too. So yeah, I don't think it's great odds for the monkey. It's great if you have a partner, but maybe not on your own. And so, here there be monkeys. And from here, I did get stuck for a fair while trying to figure out what should go next for the ranking. Until I came to the mouse. Skipping rope? Eh, decent weapon, I suppose. If you've ever been whacked with a skipping rope, you'll know it does hurt quite a lot. Anyway, the mouse it looks like a really useful power-up. You can turn into a number of smaller versions of yourself. It's very useful, but like, what then? The majority of the people you're fighting, or the enemies you're fighting, or whatever, are going to be powered up in some way. And it does seem like the smaller you get, the weaker you get. So it's not like they can't escape from your swarm, and they can't smack your doubles around any which way. It's not like Dwayne the Rock Johnson's going to be taken down by a swarm of dwarf rabbits. Know what I'm saying? And on top of that, any enemy you fight's probably going to have powers of their own that they can use on you and your mini-me's. And so, I guess it could be useful for like an ambush kind of thing, but look at how it's being used in the show by every character except Milen. It's an extra power. It's like the power of the bee. You use it in conjunction with something else. Yeah, it means you can last way longer in a battle, but in the end, without that extra power move, it's kind of like the monkey. It's useful, but it lacks that extra impact. Like I said earlier, I wouldn't really consider any of the power-ups to be actively bad, but to me, it's just some are lacking. And that's similar to the ox. It's a good power-up. Makes you impervious to other people's superpowers. But as we've seen with people like Gabe, who's used this power and then been splattered with condiments and then bludgeoned by the resistance, non-powered teenagers took him out, it doesn't actually make you invulnerable. So already we're pretty much at the level of the monkey in terms of power. In that you can't get taken out by some of the truly busted power sets that people have, but they can still whoop your ass the old fashioned way. But the good thing about the ox is it has this crazy big hammer. Seriously, look at this thing. That's a unit. Villains are going to be pissing their pants seeing you absorb their special moves and come at them screaming with this thing. That's psychological warfare, my friend. And if it could just make you invulnerable to everything and you could just spam it and you have that big hammer, the ox would truly be top tier. Just of that alone, he'd be the winner. But because he doesn't, he ain't. Bad luck, Ox. And this next one, another tough one, because honestly, I think you could make a case for a lot of the lower level Miraculouses to go in any order you desire, really. Because once you get rid of that use limit, once you get rid of that time limit, you can just spam it, they all become quite strong in a lot of different ways. And so we come to the horse. It's pretty good, right? We see it in use quite a lot where characters try to use it to ambush somebody out of nowhere. The only problem is, when you actually look at the portals, they're kind of slow, aren't they? I mean, look at Gabe here. He's sinking into the floor, trying to escape his death. Look how slowly he's sinking in. It's not exactly the great escape. Makes me think that if you open up a portal underneath somebody to try and ambush them, they're going to sink into it slowly. Maybe it's like a weird gravity thing. I don't know. And so it's going to make it rather easy to escape for a superpowered foe. And I mean, I guess you could try to use these portals to bamboozle them or ambush them. But then what? You try to snatch their miraculous slash senti monster totem slash akuma object? Eh. Maybe it could work, but I wouldn't bank on it. You're just teleporting around. I think it'd actually be really difficult to use properly. And what's the weapon? 
a horseshoe, fringe, with another power being used with it like venom, this one would soar up the charts, but on its own, I don't know, it's kind of vanilla, it's kind of basic, I don't rate it all that highly. Okay, so next up, winning the most improved award is the pig. I know, usually that's at the bottom of my list. And look, it does have a shit tier weapon, a tambourine, really? That's what we're going with here, tambourine? But the power, you know, once I was a hater. I thought this was perhaps the worst of all the powers, or among the worst. But this is actually one that I feel like has some of the most versatility in trapping people. It lets you show people their deepest wish, which in turn, like, pretty much sends them on a hallucinogenic trip where they fully live out their fantasies. And it takes a Chad tier force of will, like ladybugs, to bust out of that. And since Marinette's kind of written to be a plot armored aberration of a person, the top tier hero, as it were, I feel like your average schmuck. Those akumatized villains, miraculous users, senti monsters, they're gonna have no chance. They're gonna really struggle to resist the vision if they fall into your trap or if you manage to throw it at them or something like that. Which in turn means you can quite easily swipe their miraculous, their totem or their object, you know, and it's GG, you're finished. Only problem is if they dodge your presence or avoid your trap. It's a good chance they'll beat your ass after that. Then I think we can go the B. It's a classic, a good weapon, versatile, a good power. A one-hit KO, really. The only problem being that, unlike, say, the cat, you can't spam it. And I don't think it works on anything other than a person or a senti monster. So, unlike Cataclysm, which would destroy a shield and then instantly be used again, this can actually get blocked by an object or something like that. And so, theoretically, you could just block it over and over again, which makes it a lot harder to use, in my opinion. But hey, if you get the drop on someone, it's game over. Instant victory via paralysis. And so, in the end, I think it's best as an ambush weapon, but... It can still hold its own in general, and it's nice and versatile. So yeah, good Miraculous. But some of them are still just straight up broken when you think about it. So I'm not really sure how you could get this one higher up. And so for the last of the reasonable power sets, I think we'll go with the Turtle. The best offense is a good defense. Has a big old shield with which you can roleplay as Captain America and wallop some fools. And it also has a magic nigh unbreakable shield, which you can use to save yourself if things are getting a bit hectic, or to trap an enemy or enemies inside it. And if somebody does break it, well what do you know, you can just use it again instantly. And we see Gabe do this quite a lot in the final battle itself. Makes him very hard to beat, kind of frustrating. And thus I think the turtle, despite not being overly flashy or insanely powerful, is still one of the better Miraculouses that actually has, you know, well-written power sets, non-broken ones. And so, here we arrive. The really insanely powerful stuff. We'll go with the dragon first. For starters, a great weapon, a sword. You can't go past a sword, so that's already a good start. But then the power's also just really good. One of the most versatile. You become a living lightning blast, living wind, or living water. And I don't think I really need to explain why those are good attributes to have, although the lightning especially, would be absurdly strong to use against while well, anybody. I don't care how super powered you are, getting continually zapped with lightning is enough to ruin anybody's day. Might even be enough to fry their idol or their item or their miraculous if you do it enough. I mean, definitely for those first two. You can literally throw them on the ground. We see that in the show and they break and it's over. They're so fragile, I think lightning would definitely do the job. And on top of that, you know, you become almost impossible to hit. And like the rest, there's no time limits here. So yeah, all hail our lord and saviour, the lightning dragon. And then next up, it's the miraculous of the snake. Now the weapon here is ass. Seriously, a liar. Gonna sing me to death with that, mate? But the power itself is pretty good. Since you never have to transform back, you can always just keep it active. Keep redoing it if you run out of time. Waiting for that fateful moment where you have to scoot back in time five minutes to adjust your plans and try again, try again, try again. And in that way, it's a very strong miraculous to use. However, there is a flip side to this that I don't think is ever really addressed all that much. You need to be very good at remembering the exact sequence of events that you need to win on the fly and adapting. And I feel like if you're in an extended one-on-one brawl, that becomes a lot harder because you're going to go back in time five minutes to a different part of the fight that you might not remember very well. Whoops. And on top of that, you kind of have to win without any powers. You just get to keep repeating yourself with no allies and no real weapon. And that's also whilst trying to avoid getting taken down before you can actually use the power to zip back in time. Because a lot of these villains do have one hit KO type of moves. So yeah, it is good, but doesn't really hit that top echelon of ridiculousness. It's still ridiculous, don't get me wrong but I just feel like it would be a bit too hard to use, so here it stays. Next up, we'll go with the fox. A classic. The illusion miraculous. True. The fox. It's a weapon, a flute. Eh, 
not really in the top tier as weapons go, but, you know, as someone who's been hit on the head with a flute once in high school, it does hurt. But regardless, at this stage, who gives a shit about the weapons? They're sort of superfluous once you get to these real giga tier powers. Here, we have Illusion, which lets you summon an Illusion, which, yeah, already, just in its base form, truly absurdly powerful. But now, without the time limit, which I presume would allow you to potentially use it multiple times to stack different illusions and create a world that would just melt your enemies' minds as you slowly either wear them down or just lead them into the most glorious trap of all time. Truly, a god-tier power set right here. And yeah, I know, I'm saying god-tier a lot, but it's true. And yet there's more, more that are above this. Because next we come to an old classic, the cat. Yeah, it is honestly a bit basic, but it has the extender pole, which is one of the best weapons, let's be real, and Cataclysm. Such a versatile move, like seriously. Especially if you can just spam it. You can destroy obstacles, create escape routes, drop rubble on your enemies, kill people. And I assume that whilst a senti monster can tank a single Cataclysm, if you keep doing it over and over again, it would probably straight up die. And whilst a hero probably isn't going to Cataclysm somebody that's been powered up or has been akumatized, it's still a useful power that can bust through literally any obstacle that's put in front of you. Hell, the only reason I didn't put this even higher up is because I don't think we ever get any confirmation that the Cat Miraculous is just like the Ladybug Miraculous and the Butterfly, in that it's only limited by the user. So, theoretically, you'd think maybe Cataclysm bullets or something like that, you could shoot it out of the ring, like Cat Blanc does. I think that'd be pretty awesome. And I theorize that this sort of stuff is actually quite possible. But since it's not been confirmed, we haven't seen Adrian do anything or talk about it. But now, it stays here. And Tiger goes higher. Because, I mean, look at this. Unlimited Falcon punches with a pretty decent weapon. Seriously, look at this punch. Look at this. Even the weak pleb dudes from the finale were able to destroy a skyscraper with one hit. That's tough. But if you are using the Tiger, you can just spam this punch. Do it endlessly to your enemy until they submit. Damn. Then we have the Peacock, which, yeah, like I said, all of these ones are now broken. They don't work in a story setting. And so the writers have to actively nerf them and pretend that they can't do all these interesting things. I mean, look at what Felix does with the Moon Senti Monster. You could just do something like that and it's already game over. Who cares if the weapon's a fan? It's not like you'll ever have to use it. Next up, we have the Rooster, which, well, I mean, you give yourself a power. And as long as that power's not given by another Miraculous, it's fair game. Okay, so my power is that the Miraculouses all deactivate if you come near me. Or how about if you hear my voice, you fall into a permanent coma. Or even better, if you look in my eyes, you have a horrific attack of vomiting and diarrhea all at once. That kind of stuff. No villain can stand against my wrath now. Which in turn brings me to the Ladybug Miraculous. Which, <laughs> Jesus Christ. This one's just absurd now. You can literally create anything. That is in the canon, including magical items if you desire. After all, Ladybug makes those magical charms, which also kind of infringe on the power set of the ox, if you ask me. Kind of a resistance type of charm. So not only can the Ladybug make anything through the power of imagination, it's only limited by the user. They say that in the show. But on top of that, you could theoretically imbue your items that you're making with any sort of power any sort of magic. Plus, there's also just the Lucky Charm, which also creates an item that's tailor-made to help you out of a sticky situation that you're in right now with the right amount of knowledge. Plus, you get the Yo-Yo of Doom, the actual god-tier weapon. This one's absurdly overpowered, to the point that if Marinette actually ever bothered to use her imagination properly, the show would have ended as soon as she figured out she could. It would be game over for anybody she ever faces. She'd destroy them in seconds. And so, this would be the top, if it wasn't also explicitly shown in the show that the butterfly also has this power, in that the only limit on the butterfly miraculous is the one that the user puts upon themselves. So, theoretically, if you strip yourself of all limits, could you not send out numerous Akumas all at once and just build your own private little army with heaps of different powers? Send them all out to just clap everybody's cheeks? Does Gabe just forget he can do that? Or is he just an idiot? Huh? Are you just going to send out Mega Kumas to one person instead? Okay. Once a smooth brain, always a smooth brain. What can I say? So yeah, Butterfly is on top. My god. At last, we're coming to the end of the list. But before we end this, we have some honourable non-ranked mentions. The Prodigious, which is pretty strong. After all, you can turn into a lot of pretty strong animals and a dragon. You can't go past the dragon. And then there's the Bunny Miraculous, which I know it is a Miraculous, but come on. This one's so broken it doesn't get a rank. Time travel is insane. I could just be like, oh, I'm going to kill you as a child, and I win. <laughs> 
I mean, as a story point and as a power, time travel's often so cheap and unstoppable that it really isn't fun. And I think the writers figured that out as well, hence why it was written out in like episode two. And so it does not get on the list. Dishonorable mention for the bunny. Shame on you for existing. Shame. And so yeah, that's the end of the list really. We would like to say that these have obviously just been my opinions and now I'd like to hear yours. What did you think of my list? Could be a bit controversial, I think. You like it, hate it? What would you change and why? Give me your orders. I'm honestly curious to see what you have to say, so make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and let me know.